Welcome back to The Month Machine 2013. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to add Machine to your DJ setup. Machine really isn't just a tool for production, it's equally capable of being used in a live setting to add performance elements to your DJ mixes. The biggest technical consideration when adding Machine to your DJ setup is how you're going to sync Machine with your tracks. If you're using software like Tractor Pro 2 or Ableton Live, syncing is much easier than using CDJs or vinyl. If you use Tractor Pro 2, you can click on the link in the video description to learn how to sync Machine to Tractor Pro 2's MIDI clock. And if you're using Ableton Live, you can simply run Machine as a VST inside of the program. Syncing with CDJs or software without MIDI clock sync can be difficult because there are no tempo nudge controls in Machine that you'd usually find on something like a CDJ. With a trick that's been demonstrated by Australian DJ and producer Bassclef, you can make the process much easier by using Ableton Live. We're going to start in Ableton Live, and the first thing that we need to do is go into the preferences. So we're going to go up to Live, and then we're going to click on Preferences. Then you're going to want to make sure that you're on the MIDI tab. So the first thing that we need to do is tell Ableton to listen to the MIDI signal that is going to be sent from Machine. So on our first control area here, we're going to go to Input, and then we're going to select Machine Controller. Then we're going to turn Remote on for the Machine Input. So now we've told Ableton Live to listen to MIDI signals that are being sent from Machine. So we can go ahead and close out of the preferences. By default, the Machine Controller will only send messages to either the Machine standalone software or Machine running into a VST. However, we can also use it to control a program like Ableton Live or Tractor Pro 2 by putting it into MIDI mode. So to do that, you simply want to go ahead and hold the Shift button and then press Control. Now we're going to go ahead and assign Live's tempo nudge up and down controls to the buttons on Machine. So first we're going to need to go into MIDI mode. You can do that by simply clicking the MIDI button up in the top right. Then we're going to go ahead and click on the control we want to map, which would be the tempo nudge down. So we're going to click on it, and then we're going to press the left arrow here on our controller. You'll see that as we do that, the MIDI mapping will appear in the section below. Then we're going to do the same process for the tempo nudge up, so we're going to click on that, and then click on the new button on our controller. If you want, you can go ahead and assign other commands to the controller, but for now, we're just going to be using those two. Then we're going to go ahead and exit out of the MIDI mapping mode. Now you can control the tempo nudge from the controller. So we can go and tempo nudge down, and tempo nudge up. However, we have run into one problem, and that is that by default, the buttons on the controller are set to toggle. That means that you're essentially turning on the tempo nudge and you would have to press the button again to turn it off. What we want is just to use the tempo nudge like a pitch bend on a CDJ. So we're going to need to go ahead and set those buttons to hold. To do that, we're going to need to open up the controller editor application that you installed alongside machine and probably never opened. When you open the controller editor, you'll see that there are some templates that have already been created for certain programs, including one for Ableton Live. Since we're really only using Ableton as a VST host and a way to adjust the tempo of machine, we're going to want to make sure that we're just on a new template that is a blank fresh start. So the two buttons that we want to adjust are these ones here. So first we're going to go ahead and click on the left button there. Then we're going to want to go up to this section here called Assign. We'll see that right now the mode is set to toggle, but what we can do is go ahead and click on that drop down menu and then change that to gate. Then we're going to do the same for the right button, so we're going to click on the right button. We'll see that it's already on the assign page, we can simply change that mode from toggle to gate. Then when you're done you can simply close out of the controller editor. Now that we're back into Ableton Live, let's just make sure that our controls are working. So you can see that as I hold the button, the tempo will nudge down, and if I hold it again, you'll see that it will go up and then it stops. So now that we have Ableton Live set up, we're going to go ahead and add Machine to an empty track. So we'll go and simply add the VST onto its own channel. Now we've gotten everything set up so that you are ready to start syncing Machine running as a VST in Ableton Live to the tracks that are playing from your traditional CDJ setup. What we're essentially doing is using Ableton Live like another CDJ where Machine would be the track that's playing on that CD player. So to start syncing, what you're going to want to first do is, of course, set the BPM of Ableton Live to the BPM of the track that you're trying to sync to. So, for example, if your track was at 130 BPM, you would click on the master tempo for Ableton Live, then put in 130, and then press Enter. Then you want to make sure that you go back into MIDI mode. So I'm going to go ahead and press Shift-Control. So I'm back into MIDI mode and now able to control Ableton Live. 
So I can go ahead and then press play in Ableton and that will start playing machine. Then I can go ahead and use these two buttons to nudge the tempo of machine to the track that I'm playing. When the audio for machine is synced to the tracks that you're playing already, you can simply hold shift and then press control to stop machine from sending MIDI signals back to Ableton Live and you can start controlling the machine software again. When you're beat matching between the two audio sources, it can help to either use the metronome inside of Live or Machine. You can, of course, also use something like a pre-programmed kick drum. Now you can go ahead and play your own machine projects that you've created previously, or create new drum patterns in time with the tracks that you're playing. If you want, try mapping some of Live's effect rack macro controls to the knobs on the machine hardware controller to get some really wicked effects. If you use Machine in a setup like this, or in a completely unique setup, Leave a comment below and share your own tips and tricks. I'd also highly suggest that you check out how Bassclap uses the machine to trigger samples while playing tracks from CDJs. Thanks for watching this video tutorial from the month Machine 2013. For more, check out thedjpodcast.com.